video today, we are not only going to address the right coronary artery views, but now it's also time to talk about dominance. Now that you're comfortable with the left coronary artery anatomy, the right coronary artery anatomy, and we're gonna look at some of them, let's go ahead and talk about dominance as well. So first up are the views. So in the RCA views, we're going to take those straight LAO, REO views. So that means like LAO 20 to 30 or REO 20 to 30 with no skew on them, with no cranial or caudal. So these are usually the ones we start out with, straight LAO or straight REO. And then we are gonna talk about when you are gonna use a skewed view for the RCA because you're not going to all the time and that depends on dominance, which we are gonna talk about. So straight LAO, left anterior oblique, the RCA is going to look like a C. So I gave you two different examples here, one of a diseased RCA, one of a relatively healthy RCA minus some tortuosity. And if you take a look, you do have this kind of C shape, right? Versus an RAO, if you notice the difference in the morphology here, that this one looks more like an L if you kind of trace it out. This is more of a straighter L, this one's more of a kind of a cute bend, but you do have these two straighter segments in the middle versus this one definitely has a curved segment in the middle. So I hope you can appreciate the differences between those two. And that is really how you tell minus the whole spine rule, right? Oh, if the spine is on your right, it's LAO. If the spine is on your left, it's RAO. But like in this one, you can't really appreciate where the spine is. So you can tell by this quick glance, okay, this is a curved C shape, that's LAO. This is a straighter L shaped, that's REO. And this will be more obvious in dominant right coronary arteries and large right coronary arteries. Sometimes you have a really, really small RCA that literally might be the size of this vessel. Then you can't really appreciate that, but you also might not be taking all of these views. So in a non-dominant RCA, these might be the only two views you take, okay? An LAO and an RAO. If you're studying for the RCIS, yes, you do need to know the differences between these and be able to identify an R a right coronary artery and what view it is in, in the straight LAO or straight RAO, or at least know what the options are. So you might hear, oh, the, the takeoff is curved. And what the takeoff means is this first segment, the directionality in which it goes. So you can see this takes a bend, this initially takes a bend, versus this one kind of comes down, this one has some tortuosity, and then it comes down. So the takeoff is really that kind of first segment and the direction in which the vessel goes. And you'll hear about that when we talk about bypass graphs, is we talk about the takeoff a lot. So the, the first initial flow, which way is it going? Now, can you identify in this picture every single vessel? Can you confidently say, okay, this is the conus, this is the SA nodal, RV branch, PDA, PO. Okay, depending on what you answered, I would say really in this proximal mid segment, maybe, but in this distal segment, you do have quite a bit of overlap. Okay, this distal segment doesn't really fill. This distal segment, there's a lot, several branches overlapped, and then, yeah, this one too, hot mess, right? Now, remember what we said about the LCA, we can't always identify every single vessel in one view, and that's okay, you're, you're really not supposed to. So this is where using a cranial or a skewed view might come into play. So you might put cranial on it so that you can really separate this distal bifurcation a little more. Here, the way I drew it out, yeah, there it is kind of separated, but as you see realistically in a real picture, it, it doesn't look like that they are overlapped on top of each other. Now here we can practice some of the RCA anatomy we learned, right? The SA nodal branch, the conus, here's the SA nodal branch, here's the conus. And remember the differences between them is directionality, right? This is all going towards the right ventricle versus the SA nodal. The SA node is in the right atrium up by the SVC. So it is going to kind of go in the opposite direction of all the rest of these vessels in the RCA. So can you see that in these images? You can see two different vessels in the proximal segment, but not in every single image. And the reason is sometimes the conus has an anomalous takeoff. And usually that anomalous takeoff is that it has its own ostium. Meaning, this is a really great example. If I engage the RCA, I only see one proximal vessel, right? I don't see any kind of conus here. So this is where you might go, oh, well maybe the conus has its own ostium and takeoff. So if I engage 
the normal takeoff in the right cusp, I'm not going to see the conus there. I might only see the RCA and then the conus I would have to go and find on its own. Okay, some of them you can definitely see two vessels. You see one that goes this way and one that goes this way. So you would say this one is going out and up towards the atrium, right? So that would be the SA nodal branch. And then you see this one in the, in the proximal segment of the RCA goes down with the rest of these vessels. So this is probably the conus. Okay, this one's hard to tell, um, mainly because the catheter might be a little deep, deep seated or there's just a lot of tortuosity here. But if you kind of follow these, I can't tell if this is coming off the same ostium or two different ones, but you see there's a part of it that goes this way and then there's a part of it that kind of goes like this. So this might be the SA nodal and this might be the conus, but you might need another view for that. Okay, and same with this one. This kind of goes this way. So all of that might be the conus, but it is hard to tell. And this one definitely only has one branch and it's going that way. Probably the SA nodal and the conus will probably have its separate ostium somewhere. The only other reason you might not see two branches is if your catheter is deep seated, meaning it's too far in the proximal segment that actually, and let me see if I can draw this a little better for you. Let's say this is the proximal segment of the RCA. Okay, the conus comes off right here and the SA nodal branch comes off here. Well, if my catheter, I engage here and I start injecting contrast, okay, the contrast will fill the SA nodal branch, but it won't fill this conus branch because it is proximal to where your catheter tip is sitting. So when you inject the contrast, it doesn't fill back here. So you might think there isn't a conus. That's why you might see some people take a non-selective where they actually put the catheter out here and then inject contrast to see if they can fill the conus or if they missed anything. Now, what about when you use an AP cranial view? So when you're going to do an AP cranial view, remember the reason for that is to separate out this distal bifurcation, which you're only gonna have if your RCA is dominant. Because in all the other views, this was laid out nice, but then you had this overlap of the distal segment and you really couldn't tell one from the other. So the posterior lateral branch, if you remember, has kind of this up and away bend where it comes this way and then across, and you'll see that reflected. Let me get my pointer. You see that reflected down here as well. And then the PDA branch is a little straighter. Okay, this one does have disease right here, but it's a little straighter and longer, and it has septals, right? The septal perforators, which you see like all these little hairs coming off of it better displayed in my animated image as well. So the two vessels that have septals were the LAD coming off of the LCA, right? And then the PDA coming off of either the CERC or the RCA. So I hope you can appreciate that here. This is the distal segment. This is the posterior lateral. This is the PDA and it has septals coming off of it. This one is an AP cranial view, but you do not have to use AP cranial. You could use LAO cranial or RAO cranial. You just need to put some type of cranial skew on it in order to really separate out that distal bifurcation. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is coronary artery dominance. So dominance, most commonly you will hear is determined by the location of the PDA, the posterior descending artery. Okay, the other branch that isn't the LAD, that has septal perforators coming off of it. But what I also wanna tell you is it's actually determined by the location of both the PDA and the posterior lateral. And the reason I say that is sometimes you might have a huge PL come off of the RCA and a PDA come off the CERC. Now dominance really means how much territory is one vessel covering, okay? How important is it? So if I have a huge PL coming off of this RCA and it still looks of a decent size and the PDA is coming off of the left coronary, well, that is a co-dominant, those are co-dominant vessels. They share that territory and they're both equally important. Versus, let's say this RCA ended here. Okay, it looked like that and both the PL and the PDA came off of the LCA, came off of the CERC. This example, 
is a left dominant system. Okay, so an example of a right dominant system would be, let's say the circ ended here. Okay, it was a really small circumflex. Let's say it doesn't even have this other OM. Okay, that's the circ. This would be a right dominant patient because they have both the PL and PDA coming off the RCA and this circ is non-dominant and very small. Okay, so that's a left dominant. And I'll give you a, a good picture here of like a co-dominant. Okay, so let's keep that PL and let's get rid of this PL. Okay, that's co-dominant. So this RCA is still relatively large, right? Feeds part of the lateral wall. And then this circ is also of a decent size and has the PDA. That is a co-dominant patient. Okay, majority of the population is right dominant and then left dominant and then a small percentage is co-dominant. You might find some different anomalies. You might find patients with two PDAs. So let's say you took the pictures and it looked just like this. You have a PDA here, PDA here, maybe a PL on both sides. That's still a co-dominant patient. Okay, not everybody's anatomy fits the textbook, so really be open. And that's why we look at both sides. Because let's say you had an RCA, okay, you only took a picture of the RCA. This is a STEMI patient. They had what looked like an inferior MI. You went to take a picture and it was stumped here. Oh man, this is probably a dominant right coronary artery. And you go to open it up, okay, and it only opens to here. But you never took pictures of the LCA because you thought it was a dominant right coronary artery. Well, then you go to take a picture of the left coronary and you see the circ is also stumped. And then you go to open the circ and it's this large. Well, that was a left dominant patient. You just didn't take pictures of both sides first before deciding which one you're gonna intervene on. So that's why it's important to really understand dominance and get the whole full picture before you start making those decisions. And that's the end of this video. Like and subscribe if you like more of these in the future.